Hello and welcome to the second episode of My Knitting Podcast. Uh, my name is Maddie and this is True Summer Knits. Super excited to be here. Um, so this will be the third video on my channel actually. I just uploaded a video breaking down and talking all about the different color seasons. So if you're interested in that, feel free to check that out. But today I've got another podcast episode for you. Okay, so first of all, I think that I'm going to be doing these a little closer together now. Um, at first I thought like every two weeks or every three weeks, but I knit a lot, like a lot. I spend like all my time knitting and I have a lot of free time. So I already feel like I have a lot to share, uh, it, like in every aspect. And I just feel like I could prob probably do better maybe going like every week or week and a half. And it does help that I do like making these videos. So I'm going to kind of experiment from now on with how often I make these. But let's go ahead and get into what we have for today. So I don't have a fully finished object. Um, I usually am a pretty monogamous knitter, but actually I've been working on multiple things at once, which is why I don't have a finished object. If I'm working on something monogamous, monogamously, usually I can get it done in like a couple weeks, but um, right now I have three-ish projects going on and you'll see what I mean. But I'll start with the, the half finished object. Um, it's finished sort of, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's one sock, let's put it like that. But this uh, is a sock that I mentioned in my last podcast. Um, I had just gotten the yarn for it and I talked about wanting to knit it with this yarn, this pattern with that yarn. So this is it. This is the Wood Nymph sock. This is the front. This is the back. This actually has not been blocked. It's on the sock blocker, but I was just gonna wait for um, me to finish the other sock to block them. But as you can see here, it's got twisted rib, and then it has this beautiful lace pattern that goes down the entire sock on this side. And then it has a slip stitch heel flap, um, with a gusset, decreases, and then just a regular uh, decreased toe. And then the back, it's the same thing. It's got the leaf lace pattern, but once you get to the gusset or the heel flap, you don't knit it, knit it anymore because this is the bottom of the foot, I think, when you've got it on. So this is a free pattern. The designer is This Handmade Life. First of all, I want to say she has a lot of free sock patterns um, and a lot of paid ones too. And I think she might be my favorite sock designer I've ever seen. Like, I feel like I have no desire to knit socks from anyone else. She's got so many wonderful socks. I, I only want to knit her socks. I'm going to go through her free patterns and then go through her paid patterns. I mean, they are like my exact taste. So I'm really looking forward to knitting her sock patterns in the future. But some details about this pattern. So like I said, it's by This Handmade Life. Um, I knit this in Cascade Heritage sock. This one sock took about 28 grams of yarn. I weighed it. And the ball of yarn comes in 100 grams. So after this whole sock, I have all of this left. Like it looks like I've used nothing. So I really think I'm gonna be able to get two pairs of socks out of this. Maybe the second pair won't be super long. Maybe it'll be shorter. But still, I could totally get two pairs out of this. This is all I have left of, all I've done of the second sock, by the way. It's really not a priority. We might have a special guest today. Um, this is Cherish. She'll, she'll just chill, I promise. So the Cascade Heritage is a yarn with 75% merino wool, superwash merino, and 25% nylon. And I just wanna say, the yarn is so soft. I talked in the last episode about how I love soft yarn and I really do have an appreciation for Superwash. I just love how soft and smooth it is. Um, I would love a sweater knitted out of like a Superwash yarn like this. I just feel like it'd be so cozy and soft. But yeah, this is going to feel great against my feet. It is already starting to kind of fuzz up a little, you know, and that's to be expected with like a soft yarn. But I really don't think that'll bother me. Um, if I have to shave it a little bit, so be it. 
I just love the idea of having soft socks on my feet to wear around the house. And they're so beautiful. These will look so good, like with some nice white sneakers um, and like some jean shorts on a cute day, on like a summer day, you know what I mean? Um, so the pattern is free and it's written for 64 stitches. There's no other sizes and it's written to be knit on a 2.5 millimeter needle. Um, I did no neither of those. I knit it on a 2.25 millimeter needle. And I do wanna say I have small feet. Lengthwise, they're about average. I wear like a 6.5 uh, or a seven size shoe, depending on the shoe. But I have really narrow feet and I have very small hands too, so I need smaller socks. So what I did, um, this is a really easy pattern to modify to basically whatever size you want, because the only thing that depends on a certain stitch count is the lace repeat, which is only, I wanna say like about 12 stitches. Like you basically just knit the entire round until you get to the last 12 stitches on both needle one and needle two, and then you do the lace repeat. So the rest of the stitches, the stitch count doesn't matter. So I did no math, I did nothing different. Like I didn't have to do anything different with the pattern, I mean. Instead of casting on 64 stitches, I just cast on 60. And then um, that was fine. I knit everything normal until the heel flap. I had just knit, started knitting um, Florence, Handmade by Florence's sock pattern that I talked about. And I, I remember finding her instructions for this heel flap like very clear. And the, this pattern, I couldn't really figure out like why they were writing it the way they did. It, it, the numbers were weird to me. So I just ignored those, pa those instructions and I did the ones in Florence's pattern because it, it just had like very specific numbers in the This Handmade Life pattern. And I couldn't figure out like if I needed to change those numbers because I changed the stitch count. It was really confusing me. So I just did Florence's where you basically knit till a certain amount of stitches till the end and then just do the slip stitch pattern. And that was easy enough for me. Um, then I went into the gusset decreases in the pattern, of course, you're, it says to decrease until you get to 64 stitches. I was going to decrease until I got to 60, and then I tried it on, and I felt like I needed it to be a little smaller uh, around the middle of my foot. So I decreased to 58 stitches, and then I just knit all the way down to the bottom of the foot. So that is it for this pattern. It's super cute. I have other stuff going on, so I really don't know when I'm going to get to finish this pattern. Um, like I said, I'm going strong. I've got this. I'm working on it. But it's not a priority. And I, as much as I love the idea of having some hand knit socks for myself, I'm not more desperate to have them than I am to have like my nice summer tops and stuff that I'm working on. So maybe you'll see this again when I finish it. I don't know when that will be. but. I basically said all I have to say about this pattern regardless. So I'm going to move on to my works in progress. Um, first, we are going to have a special mention. Um, in the last podcast episode, I showed some Sandus Garn Tin Line, and I mentioned that I was planning on casting on the camisole number four by My Favorite Things Knitwear. Well, I did do that. And I, I got like to a good place. I got about to where you joined in the round you knit the four triangles um, and then you join it in the round and that's right where I got to. I will show you a picture of what that looked like about when I was at that time. Um, so you can look at that. Now I will show you what it looks like now. Yeah, um, my dog found it and I think she had a, a vendetta against this project specifically because she was very rough. I, I don't even think I can save this yarn. I do have another ball of it that she managed to not murder, but um, I'm a little discouraged, I'm gonna say. 
So I don't feel like I will be returning to this project anytime soon. Um, I don't want to unravel this. That sounds like a nightmare or untangle this, I mean. So I don't know if I ever will. So um, if anyone likes, likes detangling yarn and wants a challenge, hit me up. I will send this to you, but I am not going to be doing it. So that is where we are at with the camisole number four. I quietly deleted the project off Ravelry, and um, I think that's all we're gonna t all we're gonna say about that. Pattern was going fine before that. I liked the broken rib, but I'm a little traumatized to continue. This is the perpetrator, everyone. No, well, did you eat my project? Admit it. So, on to the actual work in progresses that have not been destroyed by my wonderful little dog, Noelle. So it is a already above 80 degrees here in Mississippi. Um, it's ungodly hot. Some days it's a little chillier, which are the best days, but mostly it's really hot and humid and uncomfortable outside. So I'm already there at summer tops. Um, most of the year here in Mississippi is summer. We get like a brief spring and a brief fall and a brief winter, but mostly it's just hot all the time. It's like I said, it's already 84 degrees here now. Um, by June, it'll be above 100 every day. Everyone will be miserable. So gotta get my wardrobe uh, settled before it gets that hot. So I mentioned in the last episode that I had ordered um, Knitting for Olive merino in the shade putty and i mentioned how the pictures on knitting for olive's website confuse me because they don't seem to match the descriptions that other people like describe the colors as being and i was really intrigued by the shade putty because people said it was like a cool toned blue gray neutral color and i was like i want that so bad um but i was really concerned because on the website it looked really yellow. It did, looked nothing like what people described it. So I took a chance and I ordered it to make this camisole. Um, and before I get into the camisole, I'm just gonna say the yarn is not a blue-gray color. It is so hard to get it right on camera, so I understand, but it is more yellowish, like more warmish. I would still describe it as cool-toned. Like, it's going to pair well with the cool tones in my wardrobe. Like it does look good um, and I do like it, so I continue to use it. But I figured out recently why there's such a discrepancy in the way people described it and the way it actually is. I was, it was after I ordered the yarn, uh, it was after I received it and I remember getting it and just being like, this is not what I wanted it to be, but I still like it, so I'm gonna use it. Like, it'll still be a good neutral because that's really what I wanted was a neutral camisole. But I was on Instagram and I saw a Knitting for Olive post where they were announcing some new colors. Um, and they were all on soft silk mohair, I think. And they mentioned that one of the colors, which they were going to soon be releasing in Merino, unknown date, unfortunately, um, is called Limestone, I believe. And they said it looked like what putty used to look like before they started dyeing it differently. They started dyeing it warmer, is what they said. I about lost my mind. I was, it's not your fault knitting for all of it, but it is kind of your fault. I love you guys. Wish someone had told me. <laughs> I could have just done something else and waited for this limestone color to come out. But I was felt like I was like, gaslighting myself. It's like, I know people say, this is cool tone, blue, gray, whatever. Why is this yellowish? It was driving me absolutely insane. So I do feel a little vindicated to know that I'm not crazy and I can see colors right and that they did just start dying it warmer. But I'm disappointed because I was really looking forward to that shade. And then once I saw the picture of limestone, like the soft silk mohair, I was like, that is the color I wanted. That is exactly what I want. And of course, they're not saying when they're releasing limestone in the merino, but then for all of if you see this, just make it up to me, release it, please, I beg of you. But anyway, 
Yes. So I'm, I'm happy to know that I'm not crazy. I'm sad to know that the color is not what I wanted it to be, but I still think it'll look okay on me. It's still, it, looks, it looks cool tone in the picture, or the camera. It is warmer tone in real life. It's, it's just really hard to photograph. So like I said, it's not, not all on Knitting for Olive. When you have 10 different neutral cream beige colors, I imagine it's very hard to photograph the subtle differences between them. But that's why I go off the descriptions, so I was so let down. But anyway, I need to get off of this soapbox before it turns into the entire video. With my three balls of Knitting for Olive putty, I am knitting the Square Necked Camisole by Garno Slicked. I don't know what that means or how to say it, but uh, what it says in Ravelry is Helen Baba, so that's what she is in my head, but I know everyone calls her Garno Slicked, and that's what's actually, I think, written on the pattern, so we'll go with those. But I am loving this. I do think it'll look really cute on me. I really just want like a neutral top to wear, like maybe bring like a cardigan with me to a restaurant or something, um, or it'll look cute with blue jeans. And I've gotten pretty far. I had not even received the yarn in my last podcast episode, and I'm already considerably under, like considerably have joined in the round and knitted. So stats of this one. So I am knitting this, first of all, in size extra small, which I am concerned about. Um, and I will tell you why. I feel I'm worried that I should have picked uh, small because for one, um, I have been really obsessed with Lucky Charms recently. And so I have been gaining weight. Um, my I thought my bust measurement when I picked out this pattern was about 33 and a half inches, but now we're looking at like 34 and a quarter inches, 34 inches. And the sizing of this pattern, the way it's written confuses me a bit because it says that it, you should have four to six inches of positive ease. Um, and it says that the, the actual bust measurement of extra small is, I wanna say, like 24 or I'm sorry 28 and a half inches so if I do that math with my bust measurement that leaves me about five to five and a half inches of positive ease so that sounds perfect but the actual bust measurement that she recommends you having for the size extra small is like I think 31 and a half to 33 and a half so I'm I'm just a little confused because that would leave considerably less positive ease for the size extra small. So I really don't know how this is going to fit. I think it'll fit me. I'm just worried about like the longevity, like if it'll, if it'll be the best fit. It looks like it will be, but that's just a concern that I have. Obviously it looks tiny because of the three by three rib, but it expands out heavily. So I just hope this will fit over my bust, if you know what I mean. Um, she recommends that this be knitted on three millimeter needles. With any knitting for all of yarn, I've, I always size down. I don't, does that make me a loose knitter? I, I usually am not, usually I get gauge, but um, every time a pattern says you, you do, like you get like 28 inches, or I'm sorry, 28 stitches or 30 stitches with knitting for olive yarns on three millimeter needles, I always have to go down to 2.5. Another reason I do that is because I like the fabric better. Like, of course, I get gauge better with, with this, with this uh, at 2.5 millimeters, but if I use three millimeter needles, um, I feel like the fabric is just a little too gappy for me. I don't, I don't like it as much. So that's kind of what the fabric looks like with these 2.5 millimeter needles. And I'm really liking it so far. It's really pretty. You basically, it's done top down. You knit these straps. Uh, I've, the straps when you first knit them are just this pearl ridge, this uh, three stitches of stockinette and then another pearl ridge and then edge stitches. I have already gone and done the double knitted edges on both of the armholes. I, th this was my equivalent of like 
when someone knits a sweater, and instead of going straight to knit the entire body, they knit the sleeves first so they don't like lose momentum. And that's basically what I did with this. I knit all of the top, I joined it in the round, and then I went back and knit double knitting on both of these armholes, which was like very nice to do, but I did have some issues with it. And it's probably partly my fault because one thing I did was after I joined it in the round on my 2.5 millimeter needles, I didn't want to, I wanted to go back and do the double knitting, but the pattern says to do it in the same needle size. And I didn't want to take my needles out of this and like put them on stitch holders because that really sucks. And I hate doing that and like getting my, putting my stitches back on. It's just like a nightmare. It's like not fun. I don't, I mean, maybe I'm doing it wrong, but I hate it. So I was not going to do that. So I took my sock needles, my 2.25 millimeter sock needles, and I just knit the edges in that. I mean, I figured, what, like a quarter of a millimeter? Is that going to make that big of a difference? Well, at first it didn't seem to. Um, I had picked up the recommended stitch ratio at, that she had in the pattern. And for the entire part where it's connected to this part down here, before you get to where it's just the straps, it was working good. And then once I got to the straps, it, it seemed like it was puckering a little bit, like it was a little too tight. So I didn't get very far with that, so I just undid it and I cast on, or I picked up slightly more stitches. Like basically the ratio I think was like two out of three stitches. And instead of just picking up every stitch, I would do like, first I would do two out of three, and the next three stitches I'd do three out of three, then I'd go back to two out of three, you know what I mean? So I'd just do that, and it worked out perfectly. Um, I'm gonna have to experiment with the neckline because the neckline you're supposed to pick up every stitch, so I don't know if that will affect it at all. I went to actually start doing it, but Lately, I've just been making like the stupidest mistakes when I'm knitting. Like it's like I just, my brain turns off mid project and I mess something up very stupid. So I, the other day, after I'd finished the double knitting on both the armholes, I picked up all the stitches around the neckline to do the double knitting, literally picked up all of them. And then I got to the end and I was like, oh no, I, I picked up from the wrong side. What is what am I what did I do? I'm gonna have to uh, undo this and pick up from the right side Be I thought I picked up from the wrong side and So there would have been like an, a, a line of stitches That shouldn't be there that would look weird. So I undid all that I Went to go do it again, and then I realized I Thought I picked up from the wrong side just because the straps look different since now I have the double knitted edges I had picked up from the right side. And do you know how long it takes to pick up a million tiny little stitches around this neck hole? Oh, forever. It takes forever. And it sucks and it hurts your hands. So that was really sad. So I stopped and I just went back to knitting in the round. Um, yeah, I have to get my ego back up a little bit before I can go finish that. But hopefully I get over myself soon and I can do that. Um, don't think I have anything else to say about that. Um, I am working, one thing is I am working the waist decreases. They look super messy, but thankfully they're under the armhole, so you can't really tell. The pattern gives you different options, um, basically like different st different amounts of decreases you can do. I don't have much of a hourglass type figure. My waist, my body is pretty rectangular. Um, so I think I am just going to do the least amount of waist decreases that she recommends. I think I only have one more set of decreases to do, and then I'm just going to knit in the round until I get to the length I want. I actually have not tried this on because, again, I don't want to take the stitches off and put them on a stitch holder because this is, like, just long enough to knit on, so it's not long enough for me to try it on while still in the needles. So I do want to like maybe try it on just to make sure I like how the waist decreases are going. But man, like the thought of putting these on a stitch holder and then not even that, the thought of having to get them back on the needles 
after they're on a stitch marker. That sucks. I don't want to do that. So I don't know if I'm going to do that. I don't know. What should I do? You tell me. But that is all for the square neck camisole for now. I'm working on this a little less, so I am kind of splitting my time between them. But I think I'll have it done pretty soon. I'm really excited to wear this. It's going to be so cute on me with jeans or jean shorts. I love it. Okay, but we'll move on to my next work in progress. So, this is a test knit that I'm doing, and the pattern is the Renee Racerback by Lottie Knitwear. Her designs are super cute, and I saw this, and again, it's a tank top, which I need a million of, and I had never done stripes before, and I kind of had this vision in my head, so I thought, I'll sign up and I'll do it. So I am. Uh, of course, it's not going to be like the most fun to look at. I'm not crazy far in this, but I have done a lot. But I, I've done more than you can see because, again, I made a really stupid mistake. And I will tell you about that. But first, the stats of the pattern. Um, this pattern, it says it's written for fingering weight yarn, a fingering weight cotton yarn. But the gauge, the finished gauge, is 25 stitches per 4 inches. I could never get 25 stitch gauge with any kind of fingering weight yarn. I know that about myself. So I bought a sport weight yarn, which I, I think I showed them in my last episode that I bought them. I don't know if I did. I think I did. Um, it's these really beautiful colors. It's this pink and blue and white color. It's uh, Ultra Pima Fine by Cascade Yarns. It's such a nice yarn. I know it is the popular opinion in the knitting community, at least on YouTube, in the circles I follow, is that nobody likes knitting with cotton. I love knitting with this stuff. I just think it looks so smooth. It feels so nice and smooth against my hands. The fabric it makes is so pretty. It's like, it's hard to tell in this camera shot, but it's like it's just slightly shiny. And it looks like something you'd buy in a store to me. Like it looks so beautiful. And like, look how nice those colors are. Like the baby pink and the blue. It's it's just gonna be so nice. I, I love knitting with this yarn. Um, I do see what people say when they say cotton's a little heavy, but I really don't think it's gonna be so heavy. Like it's gonna be uncomfortable to wear. I definitely don't know like what it's going to be like wearing it. I, I love wearing cotton normally, but I think it's really pretty and really nice. I really like this yarn, and even though I've knitted that, knitting that last summer top in merino, and I did buy some more merino to knit another summer top, but I'll talk about that later, I feel like I've been scared away from knitting in cotton by knitting YouTube, but I feel like there's nothing to be scared of. I, I do understand that people worry about it stretching out and I'm thinking if, if I really do experience that and like elastic doesn't fit or doesn't fix that I'm thinking just about knitting some summer tops that are knitted flat and seamed because if if it really if the only big problem is that it will stretch out then seaming it together will give it structure and help it to not stretch and I think that'll solve that problem and I just, it gets so hot down here. I run so hot. Like I, I run incredibly hot. My house is at 65 degrees right now. So I really do need to keep cool. And if that's the only problem with knitting with cotton and I personally enjoy it, then that's probably what I would end up doing to try to solve that problem. But anyway, in this one, I am knitting a size small because I had become aware of my slight weight gain and I, corrected the problem this time. So um, I'm knitting it in size small. I am knitting these on three millimeter needles, which is recommended in the pattern. The pattern is meant to have four inches of negative ease. And uh, I think this will fit me well. It's taken me a little longer. I'm not used to knitting stripes. I've actually never done it before. And when I first started knitting it at the bottom, I don't know if you can tell the bottom is just a little stiffer. And you can kind of see where I've, I, I can tell, I, I can kind of tell where I've woven in some ends at the bottom. And then I was like, man, this is going to be just like an ungodly amount of ends to weave in if I'm 
cutting the yarn for every color. So I didn't realize that I could just carry the yarn up the side. Um, Cause like I said, I'd never knit stripes before. I've never done anything with more than one color, but I, I figured that out. So af after I got to this point, I've started just carrying the yarn up the sides. I don't even know if you can tell. I'm just trying to be really mindful to not uh, pull too tightly so that it stretches out, or not stretches out, but puckers, like it pulls the fabric too tight. So I'm switching about like every, like every two or th two or three rows when I'm on a knit side, I just carry up the yarn and I twist it with the working yarn and I just keep moving on and that kind of carries it up and creates like little floats on the sides. But it's going well. I really love working with this yarn. Um, it's really exciting to like do stripes. I I'm not normally a stripe person and I don't plan on knitting m many things with stripes because it's not really my style. But like for one top like this, I I'm just I'm seeing the vision. This is actually the back. So it's gonna be like it's you start with like the upper back and you knit up, you pick up stitches here. This looks so crazy because it's all like, oh, I'm dropping stitches. Why did I do that? Hold on. All right, situation resolved. I'm not gonna do that again. Just use your imagination and pretend that it's on my shoulder. So you pick up stitches for the left shoulder. I think then you knit down, start knitting the neckline. I wanna say you meet somewhere here. Do the same thing for the other side. And then um, I think you start knitting the, the front top part. And then once you knit that part, you'll join it in the round and just knit straight down. The pattern is meant to have two by two ribbing. I don't know if I, or two by two, by two ribbing for the finishing. I don't know if I wanna do that. Um, I don't love like the look that it creates. I'm gonna ask if I can do double knitting for this too. I feel like it looked nicer, but if, I, if she'd rather me not, I don't mind doing two by two knitting. I just think with the cotton, I mean, at least in the sample, it just looks a little bulky with the two by two ribbing. You know what I mean? So if I can not do that, I will, but it's not the end of the world if I can't. But the pattern is written nicely. I mentioned earlier that I made a really dumb mistake. And this is actually a mistake that I like, I always, I, it's not that I always make it but I always get confused when this particular thing is said. And I wanna know if I'm the only one who thinks like this. So basically, when you started knitting, you started up at the top, which, well, this is the cast on edge, and the pattern was like, okay, this is how you knit this first stripe, and then this is how you knit the second stripe. Now, repeat how you knit those two stripes for six, more or six times total. So in my head, I'm like, okay, you walked me through knitting the first stripe and the second stripe. So now we have two stripes. And now you say repeat six times total. So I'm gonna repeat that six more times. I'm gonna knit six more stripes, right? Well, wrong. I'm stupid apparently. And it meant like six times including these two stripes. So I knit, like eight of these stripes and I remember thinking like this looks so long like this is this right but it just it's my in my brain that made sense the wording I was like I'm this must be right because that is exactly how I would describe it so then I very hesitantly asked in the group chat if that's what I was supposed to be doing she was like no I'm sorry I was like ah, it's okay so I unraveled back to the sixth row and I've lost a little bit of momentum since then, but I am going strong and I'm persevering. So um, I'm somewhat working on my square neck camisole, but I do wanna to try to at least get to where I've joined in the round so it's a little simpler. Um, I don't, especially since it's a test knit, I wanna be a good test knitter. So I'm trying to persevere. Those are it for my works in progress. But today I have some very exciting acquisitions. Uh, so I'm gonna get right into those and show you what I've got. The first one is the most exciting. So for this very exciting acquisition, I actually have no reason to buy this right now. I mean, 
I do want to knit this soon, but I've got that test knit and the other camisole, and I signed up. That is knitted in Cardiff Cashmere Classic. Ooh, we've got nine balls of these of this wonderful yarn. I literally mentioned in the last one that I wanted to get some, but everywhere I could find it here in America, or at least somewhere that I could get to America, was just like so expensive. Like basically, for a 25 gram ball this big. It, here in America, I could only find it for about $30 a ball. The lowest price I saw was at a yarn store a state over. That was $22 a ball. So I did think about buying that like if I got to the point where I wanted to knit something with this yarn. But I am a sucker for a good deal. And I found this yarn store in Germany called Needles and Wool. And First of all, the shipping was like a normal price. I think it was like maybe $10, I think less than that. And each ball was $14. That is like such a good deal. I don't know if it, what it costs in Europe or other countries, but like that's like a, the same price for me as like a ball of Isagur silk mohair. So I, I was just like, man, I, I don't know, I gotta buy this. <laughs> so I just bought it, I bought nine balls of it which definitely is a little low, but I could get the extra small or maybe a small out of the April cardigan, which is what I plan on doing with this, because the gauge, it's definitely a thinner DK. I'll show you, it's, it's a chainette style yarn. I don't know if you can tell. It's chainette and it's a light DK. And gauge wise, it is pretty much exactly the same it, as if you took a strand of uh, knitting for all of merino and a strand of silk mohair and knitted that together, it's like the same gauge. So any pattern written for that, I feel like I could knit with this cashmere yarn. Um, so I think I'm gonna do the April cardigan. I like fitted clothing, um, and this is kind of like, it's, it's a cute dusty pink color, but it's also muted enough that I feel like it could work as a neutral for me, and especially, I'm imagining wearing a cardigan made out of this with my square neck camisole and I think it'd be so cute. I can't really wear or knit sweaters all year round, but I can knit cardigans all year round because even when it's like 100 degrees outside, I might still want to bring a cardigan with me like when I'm going out because everywhere around here freezes the place out, which obviously we're overcorrecting because of how hot it is. But, so I like to have like a nice cardigan and I, I'm not happy with any of the cardigans I have now. So I really do want to knit this sometime soon. And, oh my God, it feels amazing, it's so soft. It actually, the funny thing is, I have this yarn by Barocco in my stash. I think it's called Folio. And it's like 50% it's like alpaca and 50% rayon from bamboo. And it feels just like this yarn. Like, it feels just as soft, almost. Um, which is really interesting to me, and I think it has the same gauge. It doesn't have cashmere in it at all, but it's like a very equal softness, I guess, because of the bamboo and the alpaca. So, if you can find that for cheaper, maybe try that, if you want something soft, like cashmere. But yes, it's just been, sometimes I just go into my yarn um, armoire, just to feel it, and just to ask it how, how it's doing because it's so pretty and I have too much going on to knit with it right now. But oh my God, I love it. It's just, the color is beautiful. It's, it's not so saturated that it'll be like a statement piece, like it can still be a neutral, but it's like a nice color in my palette and I think it'll look really good on me. So yeah, that's my most exciting acquisition today. I don't know when I'm gonna get cast that on, but hopefully within a month or two because I'm so excited to use this stuff. I just don't wanna have too many projects on the needles because then I'll just get stressed out. But it's just nice to have this and to look at it. It's like, it's like, a, it's like my friend, you know? But that is not it for acquisitions. I have two, two more. So the first one is something I bought because I thought I was, I bought it now because I thought I was going to need it now. Because originally me, my dad and my husband 
planned to go to Texas for a baby shower for one of my family members. And the baby's being born in June, but I thought, oh, like I will knit them a sweater for like December. So I'll knit like a three to six month or a six to nine month size. And so I bought the yarn for it because I thought I had that deadline of getting there for April. But now we're not going. So I still have the yarn and I'm still gonna knit the sweater, but I'm just gonna take my time and just ship it to them for Christmas. But anyway, the yarn I bought for it is um, Bally Superwash DK 100% Extra Superfine Merino Wool in this beautiful shade Misty Lilac. It's so beautiful. I like when it came in, I love this color so much. I was almost like, should I just steal this from the baby and knit something for myself? But my morals uh, superseded. And also I couldn't find anything I could knit with just four balls of this for myself. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. But it's really soft, it's really beautiful. It's, it was pretty cheap for this yarn too. I got it off of yarn.com. Um, it's really soft because obviously it's super wash and I'm really excited to use this. I think I want to knit, um, it's, I want to knit one of the petite knit baby sweaters, the ones that are in DK. I think, um, some uh, off the top of my head, I think there's like the Ingrid sweater baby, the Storm sweater baby, or the Esther sweater baby. I think those are all DK. And, um, I want to knit like a textured little sweater that they can take cute pictures in for Christmas. Um, I did feel weird about even using superwash wool for a baby, but I think it'll be okay. I think like a nice sweater will pr like that's hand knit would probably just be kind of like for pictures or um, like a little bit more special occasions anyway. That's what I would, pr I don't know. If I only had one, it's probably what I would do. But give me your opinion. If not, maybe I can knit something for myself out of this and get like some cotton for the baby I just don't know it makes me nervous I want to give them something that's useful you know what I mean I don't want to just give them like garbage that I spent 40 hours on you know what I mean but the yarn very nice I got four balls of it I definitely recommend and the color is beautiful so I have one more yarn acquisition and I actually mentioned it earlier, I got more yarn for a cam camisole, I got more merino. So I got the Knitting for Olive Merino in this dusty aqua color, uh, which is nice. I think it'll be a nice color on me. Um, it'll be really cute. I don't have a specific camisole in mind. I actually, I bought it after um, I started using the putty. And then I, I mentioned that I signed up for a test knit and this yarn will work for that test knit. So before I decide anything, before I get myself excited for any specific project, I'm just saving it and waiting to see if I get selected for that test knit. So that, this yarn is kind of put away for that. And if I don't get it, that I can like look at some projects and get myself excited. I just don't wanna get myself excited for something and then like use this yarn for that test knit. You know what I mean? But I think it'll look really pretty in that test knit, so maybe, hopefully I get that and I can knit that, but mm, I don't know yet, so pray for me. Now, that is all for my yarn acquisitions, but I also sew, and even though winter is the best time for knitting, summer is the best time for sewing. So back, in, back at Christmas, I got a $150 gift card to Mood Fabrics by my husband's grandmother. And I never used it because I just hadn't been having the urge to sew in the cold weather. I love sewing dresses, so I haven't used it. So I had a few drinks uh, a couple weekends ago and decided to buy some fabric for some summer dresses. So if you care about that, I'm going to show you that now. If not, um, well, that that's all the knitting stuff for today. <laughs> okay. So I'm super excited about this fabric. I got three, three fabrics, and I will also show you the patterns that I plan on making with the fabric. The first fabric that I got, all three of these I got three yards of, because that's about the perfect amount to make like a dress without worrying too much about running out of fabric. I got this lovely uh, pale pink linen it's so hard to show fabric. It's not like yarn, it's, it's huge. 
It's this pale pink linen fabric. It's like a medium to lightweight linen. And with this dress, I am going to be sewing the pattern Secret Island Dress by Galia Couture. She has really nice classy, some really nice classy patterns. Um, and I'll put up a picture of that dress that I'm gonna make. So that is dress number one. I think it's gonna be beautiful. It's designed for like a linen fabric like this. So I think it'll be perfect for that. And it, it'll be really cute. I'd love to knit like a, one of those market bags, market type bags to go with it. Because once you see the dress, you will know that that is the exact kind of dress that you wear a market bag with. And the fabric is called Famous Australian Designer Shell Pink Lightweight Linen uh, for Mood Fabrics, in case you want to go look at it. Now, the second fabric I got, I'm planning on making the Meredith dress by Easily Made Designs. It's a very simple, like, um, shirred dress, and I think this fabric will work perfect for it. So this is a cotton gauze. It's very drapey um, and it's a little bit see-through so I will have to use a lining for it and um, it's got these beautiful little blue flowers on it and I think it'll just be perfect for the shirred waist and like the gathered bust I don't know if I'm gonna do the sleeves exactly like it is in the picture I might modify them a little bit but I'm just gonna play around once I get to making that dress and this fabric is called, where did it go? I just saw it. It's Mood Exclusive Blue Ditzy Days Cotton Gauze. And again, I got three yards of this. And then the last fabric I am the most excited about. It's so beautiful. And I'm so excited to knit this dress with it. So this is a viscose Georgette fabric. Uh, oh my God. Look at this. Look how beautiful this is. Um, I'm not, I don't normally wear prints either. I know I got two prints this time, but this is just so beautiful. It's actually pretty transparent. It's just hard to tell. Um, it's not so transparent that you can see right through it, but I will need like a lining. Just, but it's just very flowy. Like it's extremely drapey and beautiful. Very high quality fabric. Um, if you're American, you probably better know viscose is like rayon. That's what I call it. And viscose is more like the UK. That's what they call it. But either way, it's the same kind of fabric. And it feels amazing. I actually I thought it was silk when it came in. I couldn't remember if I'd ordered um, this as silk georgette. It feels just like silk. It's amazing. And such a nice fabric like this requires a very simple design. So I am going to be sewing out of this the Lena dress by This Is Kachi. Um, I might play around a little bit with the fit, but it's just a simple flowy dress. I might lengthen the skirt a little bit. I might also, um, depending on the fabric requirements, I'm thinking about uh, the widening the skirt pieces and gathering them to fit so it's a little more flowy than in the picture or just a little more voluminous, I guess, because I just feel like this fabric is so beautiful. I just want to show it off, but I don't know. I, I definitely want to sew one of these soon. I honestly want to start with this one because I'm the most excited about it, but I am really into my knitting right now, so I don't know what I'm going to do that. But definitely, I will be talking more about that in future episodes because I love sewing. It's like my first passion. So I will definitely be talking about that more on this channel. Oh, and that fabric is Mood Exclusive Meadow Meditation Viscose Georgette. These are all three from Mood Fabrics. All right, and that is everything for today. I, I think this ends up being a pretty long episode. Again, I spend all my time like knitting and stuff, so I have a lot to talk about. I think I'm gonna do this probably again next week and just try to have more updates on like my projects so that I don't have to have such long episodes every time. Um, but for today, that is all. I'm excited to see you guys again next week and thank you for watching.